welcome to study number two in the book of Leviticus and I uh, hope you're enjoying Leviticus as you get into it. Always talk about blood and mold and bodily discharges and oozing sores. Doesn't sound very exciting but this is a great book actually. Uh, it tells us a lot about uh, the reasons that Christ had to come, all the sacrifices that he took the place of and we just praise the Lord uh, for that. Well let's get into our study today in Leviticus chapter number two and three. We're actually going to do two chapters today and so let's get right through this real quickly here so that uh, we can get through it in, the, in ten minutes or less. Study number two, Leviticus chapters two and three. Two questions we're going to answer. The first one is from chapter two. The second question is from chapter three. So uh, we'll kind of take them apart that way. First question is the cereal offering or the grain offering represents a blameless life. The purity of its ingredients is emphasized, and the worshiper who is not blame who is not blameless draws near to God with acceptance in the power of an offering possessing the perfection that he lacks. Consider how this offering is fulfilled in Christ. Secondly, the peace offering speaks of communion. It's based on the blood of atonement and it's expressed in a whole burnt offering that's pleasing to the Lord. And do you know the heart satisfaction of such a relation to God? Well, let's look at Leviticus chapter number 2. We will read it together here, and it's on the screen for you. Leviticus chapter 2. When someone brings a grain offering, the question refers to it as a cereal offering, to the Lord, his offering is to be of fine flour. He is to pour oil on it, put incense on it, and take it to Aaron's sons, the priests. And the priest shall take a handful of the fine flour and oil together with all the, the incense and burn this as a memorial portion on the altar, an offering made by fire and aroma pleasing to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and his sons. It is a most holy part of the offering made to the Lord by fire. If you bring a grain offering baked in an oven, it is to consist of fine flour, cakes made without yeast, and mixed with oil, or wafers made without yeast and spread with oil. And if your grain offering is prepared on a griddle, it is to be made of fine flour, mixed with oil, and without yeast. Crumble it and pour, it, pour oil on it. It is a grain offering. If your grain offering is cooked in a pan, it is to be made of fine flour and oil. Bring the grain offering made of these things to the Lord. Present it to the priest, who shall take it to the altar. He shall take out the memorial portion for the grain offering and burn it on the altar as an offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and his sons. It is a most holy part of the offerings made to the Lord by fire. Every grain offering you bring to the Lord must be made without yeast, for you are not to burn any yeast or honey in an offering made to the Lord by fire. You may bring them to the Lord as an offering of the first fruits, but they are not to be offered on the altar as a pleasing aroma. Season all your grain offerings with salt. Do not leave the salt of the covenant of your God out of your grain offerings. Add salt to all your grain offerings. If you bring a grain offering of first fruits to the Lord, offer crushed heads of new grain roasted in the fire. Put oil and incense on it. It is a grain offering. The priest shall burn the memorial portion of the crushed grain and oil together with all the incense as an offering made to the Lord by fire. Uh, just a few things uh, about this passage of scripture. So you can bring the ingredients or you can make some sort of cake at home uh, or you can bring the grain itself. However you do it though there's a certain portion of that that was to be taken out and offered up to the Lord. The rest belonged to Aaron uh, and his sons uh, the priest and everything was supposed to have salt on it. Uh, I wouldn't suggest you salting everything today though. It's not particularly good for you. Um, but there was a, an importance to having that salt in there, an importance to not having yeast and not having honey, those two things being symbols of sin. Salt being a symbol of the, the preserving power uh, that Christ has in our lives. So let's look at that first question. The cereal offering or the grain offering represents a blameless life. The purity of its ingredients is emphasized and the worshiper who is not blameless draws near to God with acceptance and the power of an offering possessing the perfection that he lacks. 
consider how this offering is fulfilled in Christ. Well, the one that knew no sin became sin for us. The one that did not need to offer a sacrifice became the sacrifice for us. He was perfection. We are not perfection. So he was offered up in our on our behalf. Let's look at uh, chapter number 3 of Leviticus. The fellowship offering or the peace offering. If someone's offering is a fellowship offering and he offers an animal from the herd, whether male or female, he is to present before the Lord an animal without defect. He is to lay his hand on the head of his offering and slaughter it at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And then Aaron's sons, the priest, shall sprinkle the blood against the sides of the altar on all sides and from the fellowship offering he's to bring a sacrifice made to the Lord by fire all the fat that covers the inner parts or is connected to them both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the covering of the liver which he will remove with the kidneys then Aaron's sons are to burn it on the altar of the Lord of the burnt offering that is on the burning wood as an offering made by fire an aroma, aroma pleasing to the Lord if he offers an animal from the flock as a fellowship offering to the Lord, he is to offer a male or female without defect. If he offers a lamb, he is to present it before the Lord. He is to lay his hand on the head of his offering and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's sons shall sprinkle it, sprinkle his blood against the altar on all sides. For the fellowship offering, he is to bring a sacrifice made to the Lord by fire. Its fat, the inner tail part, in, entire fat tail cut off close to the backbone and all the fat that covers the inner parts or is connected to them. Both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the covering of the liver which he will remove with the kidneys and the priest shall burn them on the altar as food an offering made by fire to, to the Lord by fire. If his offering is a goat he is to present it before the Lord he is to lay his hand on its head and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's son shall sprinkle its blood against the altar on all sides. From what he offers, he is to make this offering to the Lord by fire. All the fat that covers the inner parts or is connected to them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins, and the covering of the liver, which he will remove with the kidneys. And the priest shall burn them on the altar as food, an offering made by fire, a pleasing aroma. All the fat is the Lord's. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Wherever you live, you must not eat any fat or any blood. Well, that would be good for you, not eating the fat. Uh, anyway, just notice real quickly here that uh, the offering could be male or uh, female from the flock. Uh, question number two, the peace offering speaks of communion uh, based on blood of atonement and expressed in a whole burnt offering pre pleasing to the Lord. Do you know the heart satisfaction of such a relation to God? Well, the peace offering was also known as a fellowship offering uh, because it symbolizes the fellowship that man can now have with God. It was only it was the only sacrifice where the one bringing the sacrifice was actually allowed to eat part of the sacrifice. Uh, the priest likewise partook in the eating of the sacrifice while part of the sacrifice was consumed by the fire of the Lord upon the altar and, and part of the sacrifice uh, consumed by the person that brought it. It just shows us that there's fellowship uh, with Christ and with the body of Christ. And it's just such a beautiful reminder to us that we can actually sit down and have communion, have a meal with the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the marriage supper of the Lamb and sitting down and having communion with my Heavenly Father and with my Savior. Hope you have a great and wonderful day. God bless.